Hi, my name is Rob Ray with MP3 Car. We're here in part two of our two-part series talking about organic LEDs. And I'm here with Mark Shanks from Two Blood. So Mark, tell us about the future of OLED. We talked a lot about the past, but what's, what are you excited about? What's, what's going to happen? Well, uh, like we mentioned, uh, you know, there are two different avenues. There are polymer and small molecule-based industries. And I think we're starting to see those two industries converge and you're starting to see hybrid OLEDs with you know, a mixture of polymer and small molecules. So you're getting these you know, efficiencies and you know, really nice properties of both combined into one device. So you're starting to see some really, some really nice you know, displays. Um, yeah, as we move forward, uh, researchers are, are heading into different avenues. They're looking at phosphorescent you know, mineral molecules, which are really super efficient and really saturated colors, um, and that's going to make your displays even better. But beyond the standard flat panel display technology, you also have these physical properties um, that, that the OLEDs allow you to you know, delve into different applications that LCDs could only dream of you know, enter, entertaining, like uh, flexible displays, like we mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you can take an OLED and you can apply it to, you know, a flexible service. So you can have a, a foldable or roll-up display. Uh, you can implement it with clothing. Uh, a whole number of, you know, different applications. Convex surfaces, conve concave surfaces. Um, and there's also the transparent aspect, which I'm really excited about. And that's, that's one of the segments that my group focuses on is transparent OLED uh, technology. And the way that works is a standard OLED has a non-transparent cathode. So you use a, a material like silver, um, and it, it, the silver is so thin, you can make the silver so thin that it will actually be you know, transparent. When you're, when you're talking about the order, you know, order magnitude of uh, nanometers, or the scale of nanometers, you know, those typically, inherently, non-transparent materials become transparent. So how small are we talking about for the silver layer that's transparent? Um, the actual cathode layer can be anywhere between, you know, 10 and a couple hundred, couple hundred nanometers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's really thin. Okay, and then you put your polymer and, or your uh, compound on top of that. Actually, you build it from the substrate up. Okay. So you'll start with your substrate, mm -hmm. then you'll apply, you know, an anode, which is typically your standard indium tin oxide, which is what LCDs use, which mm -hmm. is a transparent conductor. Okay. Um, and then you'll apply a. You could go with a whole number of different combinations of materials. Sure. But typically, you'll apply a whole transporting layer, uh -huh. uh, possibly an emissive layer. And then an electro electron transport layer. Okay. And then your cathode layer. Okay, and that that whole package is about the hundred nanometer range. Right, it can be yeah. And because the stuff is so thin, it actually you can the light just passes right through it. Correct. Yes, and and you can actually I mean, you can use different uh, transparent uh, materials for your cathode. You can actually use an ITO as your cathode. An ITO. So, Indian to Okay. Uh, so that your whole dis your whole device would be transparent. Mm -hmm. um, so all those layers together are transparent, which would allow you to emit light in both directions. So just to put that in the frame of reference, a human hair is sixty thousand nanometers, and the uh, if you're if you're a geek, you might know that some of the new Intel processors, the scale in which they make those is forty five nanometers. So. We're talking about a really thin thickness here in the 100 nanometer range to make this transparent. Super thin, yeah. Yeah. So you can apply a transparent OLED or a TOLED display to uh, an eyeglass lens. Mm -hmm. um, and in your everyday life, that, that lens and that display will feed you information. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of an augmented reality okay. you know, technology. So walking down the street, I'd have a little thing right here on the inside of my glass. and. It might say somebody wrote on my Facebook wall, and it would show up in my, in my right, 
for sitting at a meeting and you, right. you don't have all the details you're supposed to have and you could look up the uh, details really quickly. And, okay. You know, key information to you that would help you out in your daily life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I even envision, you know, one day, you know, a second life mm -hmm. augmented onto, you know, real life. Right. So you could have, you know, this virtual world that's transposed onto your real world. So all those things become possible once you have a transparent mm -hmm. display technology. So if you put this on the windshield of your car, let's say, the, the, the sun wouldn't overpower the LED, the OLED structure. It, it would. Uh, you'd still see. You would see an image, and it would be a pretty good image. Okay. Um, and you're right. An OLED, yeah, a transparent OLED embedded in a windshield would be better than a, than a projection right. technology. Okay. Something. So you could even take this and put it on the outside of a vehicle. I mean, is there, in the future maybe, you might be able to spread a flexible, you talk about clothing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you had a flexible surface, why couldn't the body panels of your car be made out of an OLED? Sure, you absolutely could. Um, I, you know, I'd refrain from saying, you know, a, a standard user or, a, you know, just your average person could go and, and apply the... You know, technology, unless it was like a pre-made technology that, that was on a laminated surface that you could adhere. Yeah, um, that's one of the big fads. Yeah. People, are, people are like painting art all over their car. I sure. mean, so you, you could have you know you, you different could, art yes, you could based it. on you know what music you were listening to or what clothes you were wearing that day. You could have your your car kind of be a little bit of a right. chameleon yeah. of what, what's happening on the inside. Absolutely, yeah. and as these as these polymer-based OLEDs become you know, more prevalent, and you see more industries embracing them and you could easily see them moving to a roll-to-roll -roll, uh, deposition process, which allows them to basically, like, like a newspaper mm -hmm. line with your substrate instead of your newspaper, and you're constantly printing these displays, you know, on a mass, mass okay. scale. So the biggest barriers to entry to making all the stuff that we just talked about happen are moisture. Uh, it, it sounds like economies of scale as far as getting costs down. What are the, the other big things? Uh, flexible substrate. Okay. Uh, if you're talking about a, I mean, if you want a active matrix um, type display, you have to think that your your thin film transistor mm -hmm. uh, plane, your back plane, will have to be just as flexible as your as your OLED device. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, they they go hand in hand. So that that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Also. Sounds like exciting stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time to come out and meet with us. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks.